Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Tuesday and welcome back. I'm your host, Ryan Duffy, and this is the Pathfinder Experience. If you're new around these parts, Pathfinder is a weekly podcast where we sit down with the top shot callers in space. Today, we are sitting down with Bill Perkins, an energy trader, trader high stakes poker player, author, and the founder of SkyFi, among other things. I'll tell you more about SkyFi and then we'll bring Bill on. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. Space Ventures is the planet's first space investment portal. Space Ventures has recently launched an effort to open an investment round into SpaceX. They've received over 38 million in pledges from 2,200 investors, not to mention over 80 million in private party interests looking to add to the petition. With this kind of traction, Space Ventures is well on its way to becoming the first investment portal to conduct a SpaceX allocation. If you're interested in investing in SpaceX, you could be a part of history by heading over to spacedventures.com, that's spaced with an ED, then pledge to invest in SpaceX, no commitment required. Check out their website, spacedventures.com, for more information. And as always, do your own research. This is not financial advice, et cetera, et cetera. Again, that's spacedventures.com. So what is SkyFi? With a network of 70 plus satellites and continually growing, SkyFi is on a mission to democratize access to satellite imagery so that businesses can solve their toughest problems and individuals can explore their boundless curiosity. By creating a consumer marketplace for satellite imagery, SkyFi is the one-stop shop for Earth observation, the simple and easy to use process that allows customers, consumers, to order existing images or order a new image by tasking a satellite all from the convenience of their smartphones. So this is a, a, a very colorful conversation that takes us from um, life as an energy trader, working at the helm of the hedge fund, to wake surfing, poker, and aliens. Of course, plenty of space and satellites in the mix. I also want to add that Bill has set a new record for curse words on the podcast, previously held by me, and it will be tough for any of you future guests in the crowd to, uh, to, to beat that record. Um, before we want to, before we dive in, I wanted to add a couple, uh, th- there's, there's some, uh, abbreviations that we use. UX is short for user experience. And then API is short for app- application programming interface. All right. With that out of the way, Bill Perkins, founder of SkyFi. Let's bring him on. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Uh, I really appreciate you doing this on very short notice for, for, for everyone in the audience. I, I basically reached out and you said yes uh, within 20, 24 hours. And it's, of course, election day and there's a lot, a lot going on. So we appreciate you being here. Yeah. Well, I voted early and I like to blather, so it, it works out. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> uh, today might, uh, of any days, today might be a, a good one to, to spend a little bit of time off of Twitter, but I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, so, yeah just, just hang out, relax, yeah. do other so, things. So where are you calling in from today? Are you in Texas? I'm actually calling in from Austin, Texas, oh, wow. in a room in the Soho. Okay. I'm, I'm going to the Chris Rock show tonight. Uh, he's performing here at the Moody Center, so I'm going to go see some comedy tonight. Gotcha. So we're, we're, uh, we're a couple miles away from each other. And gotcha. we'll, return, we'll return to Austin, but... Before well, I welcomed you onto the show, you know, I, I ran through your bio, but I want to ask you yourself. You know, we, we have we have trader, poker player, author, uh, VC, founder, but if you could choose just one word or title to describe yourself, what would it be? Oh, factotum. <laughs> no, uh, the, factotum. Uh, that's jack of all trades. Um, I, I adventurer. You know, I'm kind of winging life. Just you know, investing in life, investing in life experiences, investing in companies. Um, so adventurer. Okay. Okay. What was the first one? Factotum. I never. I don't think I know that. Factotum. That's. Uh, it's a person who's good at many things. A jack of all trades. Okay. Added. Right. Added a. Jack of all trades is a master of none, but better than the master of one. That's kind of me. Gotcha. Gotcha. And where, you know, I I, I did read through the bio high level, but. What would you say? Like, where where was the bulk of of your career? What have you been doing for? You know, most of the career, most of the time uh, I've spent is in trading energy derivatives, particularly natural gas. So I'm in energy uh, energy trading. Mm-hmm. I have a hedge fund called Skylar Capital Management. Um, it takes in that kind of 
you know, why I'm on payload is kind of my journey through trading and the tools and data I needed for trading mm -hmm. uh, that I do develop for trading, bringing them in into the space industry when we get to that part. Yeah. But that's kind of where the bulk of my time has been spent in my career. Right, right. And you also wrote a book, so I'll give you the, the chance to, to, to plug that and kind of the core underlying philosophy or precepts from Dive with Zero. Yeah, so I wrote a book, I wrote a book uh, got the title, Die with Zero. It's a counterfactual regret minimization algorithm solving for net fulfillment. So I take, you know, your wealth, your health, and your time and how those uh, variables change throughout your life and I give mental models on how to allocate those properly so you get the maximum fulfillment out of your life. How to use up all your resources while you're alive so that you get the most, according to your own values. Not, I'm not telling you like, right. you should do this or you should do that. I'm saying, no matter what you do, this is how you optimize. When did you, when did, when did was this sort of a, a light bulb, neon light bulb moment where you knew that you were developing this this algorithm and, and that you had to tell the world about it or did you gradually realize it over time and just I, I think the decision that gradually over time the same question right like what does it all mean how do I get the most what do I want out of life you know these, these this kind of recurring theme like how, how you know what's the money for why am I giving up hours of my life for money that I would never spend right. or die with you know then if I'm not if I'm not going to do that that's silly when do I spend it? How do I spend it? You know, th those type of questions. Like, what fulfills me? How do I? How do I? How do I get maximum fulfillment? What drives fulfillment? Th these questions happen all throughout my life, and different pieces of it, um, and conclusions I've came to it at different times in my life. And then eventually, I wanted to write a program to come up with the you know the algorithm I had mm -hmm. in my head, the models. And there's just long story short, there's not enough computational power to in the world and the universe to give me what I wanted. But you can abstract it and have the mental models and then basically have a more fulfilling life by following those mental models. And and the book the book has the book has a lot of, of, of helpful visuals as well. Which I, I, I'm 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 a sucker for, for good visuals. Yeah. I mean, so, sometimes they say, you know, in books, don't put in graphs or diagrams or formulas. You lose readers or not. You know, it's hard when you write a book. Like, you can approach it as, like, this is going to be a textbook. This is going to be a cookbook or this is going to be a storybook, right? And it's kind of like, well, how do I reach the most people, get them to understand the concepts and actually have it sink in, right? A lot of times people understand concepts and it doesn't sink in so they don't apply it. And you really want it to sink in so that people, you know, get it and apply it. Right, right. Well, I mean, we could we could sit here and, and discuss die with zero all day, honestly. But yeah. but yeah. I do want to, I want to get us to, to the topic at hand and that's what, what we cover here at, at space. Payload and Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah, it's space. So before we dive all the way down the, the space rabbit hole, in a previous conversation, I recall you, you telling me about your kind of experience, and this is prior to you know starting SkyFi, your experience buying satellite imagery in bulk and, and just kind of dealing with that, that sector for the specific, you know, I don't know, for, for the alpha or, or alternative data that you were trying to get as an, as an energy trader. Can you kind of walk the audience through high level why an, why an energy oh. trader? And, you know, I, I, of course, for, for, for our fans and listeners who, who are working day in and day out in the EO industry, that might be pretty clear and apparent why, why you'd be buying that. But, but for those who might be coming from other parts of the, the space ecosystem. Okay. Well, trading is pretty much value add on information, right? You, you hoover in information and you make a decision about how that's going to affect whatever you're trading, whether it's apples, bananas, natural gas, oil, whatever, stocks. And so there's, there's lots of variables that sometimes we're guessing about what they are. And, and, and it's educated guessing. So it's a guesstimate or an estimate, et cetera. And, um, you know, Traders buy all kinds of data streams that subscribe to services, et cetera. They use their brains to take that information, have some sort of model, and, and it becomes actionable intelligence, and they do whatever they're going to do in the market. Um, for, you know, fast-forwarding to how I got into space and how space-based uh, remote sensing 
would help me is there's a lot of questions or a lot of estimates on certain things where, well, if we had this type of sensor, if we had this information, or if we had a guy in a parking lot, right, like we can get this type of information. And one, one of the things that people guess a lot is what are rigs doing and, and what are frack crews doing? And, you know, people call around and ask and try and come up with an estimate. They, they, they use other types of data, et cetera. And, you know, my, my, my thought was like, wh why are we doing these educating guesses when we can take photos and know? That was my theory. Like, there's, there's this satellites all over. Yeah. They're taking pictures of every single square inch of the Earth. We've, we've, we've gone to the School of Hard Knocks on machine learning. We can program this so we can, you know, it's not like I'm going to be looking at the pictures, right? Like, there's going to be a machine looking at the pictures and grabbing them. At the same time, uh, I became familiar with SAR or was introduced SAR in the uh, Synthetic Aperture Radar Journal and learned about kind of like, what that's used for and the reflectance and Sentinel-1, there's this free data out there, um, you know, every seven days in the United States, where if you build a data fusion model, your optical model, plus your star model, your, your, uh, your accuracy goes way up, right? 98%, 98.5%, right? And so you start to get interesting questions asked with a level of detail and precision that's just not available. And the question is, is it worth it? Is it... Is it, is it, is it economic right is the value are you going to be able to make a return on that information someday in the future right is going to help you make better informed decisions and so we went out to acquire satellite data in order to build this model yeah and yeah. um you know that was a very painful process <laughs> an extremely painful process you know it wasn't like showing up in store i need a three inch socket wrench so and so paying for them you know it's like Call, I will call you back, somebody, whatever. What's your use case? What do you mean, what's my use case? Like, who goes to buy a hammer mm -hmm. or a saw? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you got to your use case before we sell you the hammer. Right, right. No, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> right, right. Like, what, what, what is this? Like, get out of my business, right? But it's pretty much the satellite industry, right? Like, they want to know what your use case is, right? And there's this long sales cycle. And it's not a long sales cycle because traders are instant, right? Like, tell me the price. I want to buy the thing, and if the price works, I'm going to buy the thing, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. Right, presumably, right? I got to go it's, trade. It's, there's not human. There's not humans in the loop, right? Like you want to be right. Like I, on this not, not humans to be in the loop. I'm like, okay, it's unfortunate uh, that I have to like make a call. You got to call me back. I got to talk to a human or whatever. But um, not, not only was that an issue, there was kind of this opacity around the pricing. Right. right. What's the price if I buy this much, the volume discount? You know, it reminded me of like buying a used car in like 1990. You know, it's this kind of like really uh, opaque, um, long, pro longer process than it needs to be, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, as opposed to, you know, a technology. Like, I, I, you know, I'm used to order something online and it shows up your house. I can order a bed, a car. I, you know, I bought cars online. My friend bought a doctor's building in Texas on LoopNet online, never saw the place, et cetera, in, in like two days, right. you know? And so here I am spending three months, three and a half months to cut a deal mm -hmm. for, for, it's like, well, what's your area of interest? You know, well, it's the whole United States of America. Oh, we don't have that. We might have said, you know, it literally was kind of like, whoa, you know, I, I had the, the, the legacy effects of being a business that was entirely dependent on government mm -hmm. or, or contracts or deal structure around government and government RP, RFPs. And so I quickly realized this is a government technology focused business, not a customer focused business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and, um, that was frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, the, the, that's the whole thing with the satellite industry, right? Is like, 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 or satellite imagery is that all of the pricing to your point for, for, you know, not for everyone. Um, I don't want to speak categorically, but it's like, bare, it, it, it's a perennial pain point. And you have to go through like multiple sales conversations and like the, the pricing is like basically spec to your specific situation and your needs. And, and I, I think, you know, there, there are other, there are like, like SpaceX is probably the leader in, in terms of transparent upfront pricing. Like you can just see how much it would cost to book a Falcon 9. Whereas I think, you know, like 
for satellite imagery, it's all still for for in, in a lot of cases, it's still very much like bespoke and, and and tailored to each end user. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's I, you know I'm not going to get into reasons why, but you know I speculate like they're trying to take something out of your value chain. It's like there's the value of the image, right? There's a base value of the image you provide the service. You have a margin, but it seems like if you do something of high value, they're going to try and like get into your value chain, right? Into your value add. And I'm like, you know, I'm the trader. You're not. You're slinging images. What's the slinging images price, right? Like, don't go, oh, now he's doing trader so he can make millions of dollars. Try and, like, charge me more, right? And, and they, get, they get away with that with the government, right? Because the government, right. really, nobody, it's nobody's, it's nobody's, uh, it's tax dollars money, yeah. right? It's the taxpayers' money. Why did I care, right? It doesn't hurt them. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the, these these big overpriced contracts, you know, uh, yeah, we give you most favored nations, but the technical specs are only a little bit different. So, you know what I mean? Like it's it's never no, most favored nations. It, it's it's very it's very weird. And I think, you know, it's starting to shift because there's more competitors going up. Everybody's launching. Lost cars, lost costs are coming down. Technology costs are coming down. People are coming up with unique uh, solutions, but still. Everyone, you know, I, I suppose when they raise money, is like, we got the best, greatest new sensor thing, and therefore we're going to get all these government contracts, et cetera. And the government kind of prepays sometimes to get them in, 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 in space. And so you just have a business that's always technology-focused and not customer-focused, no matter what lip service they, 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 they pay to it. Right. Right. Nobody's ever heard of a tech company. It's like anybody's like, oh, I have an app. I'm building a tech company, whatever. I'm like, what's your API? Everybody, well, I have this API, that API, this API. You go to satellite operators, they're like, we, we don't have an API. Right. Based on based yeah, every single based, one. Oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming in a year or whatever, right? <laughs> based on the the status quo, like for for energy specifically, uh, energy, oil and gas. Do 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 firms, you know, like like yourself and and the ones you compete with. Are, are they building those models in house to do that sort of automatic detection based on you know space based data and, and, and imagery? Um, you know, no. I, I'm, I mean, they, I mean, so I build a lot of tools in house. I have programming expertise, et cetera, and it's like I think we can do this. And then that peeled out, and they were like, you know what? My CTO left. He went to a company called Simmax, and they're like, we're going to sell this product to other people because they're not going to go build it. Yeah. They're not going to go deal with the hassle of dealing with satellite operators. I mean, there's only a few operators that have an API, right? right? Planet has one. They're fairly new. The newer guys have one. But they're not going to go do that, right? Like, they are going to wait for somebody to deliver that service to them, right? They, they can't. They have other problems to solve, other, other the verticals, and they're necessarily... They, you know, I got to train the models. I got to make sure the models work. I got to, I'm taking risk in developing this tool, right? And it's a pain in the butt yeah. buying a bunch of satellite data. So um, I'm unaware of any energy firm that's using that. Like I know of people that are using free SAR data and, you know, it's only once every seven days in North America as opposed to daily in Europe, right? But to try and like estimate crude oil stocks or whatever they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. But Sentinel had a had an error that went down and therefore yeah. their models went to shit. And they weren't ever that good anyway because you really have to purchase data. Uh, you know, you get free data, you, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's, nice to, it's nice to fuse it to, to increase the accuracy of your program, but you need to buy data specifically, specifically with this pro uh, thing to actually look at every single well pad in the United States of America to figure out, is there a well on there? Is there a rig on there? Is there a frack crew on there, et cetera? Yeah. You have to build, you have to train your models. Like this is what a uh, you know, frack crew looks like. This is before they start, this is while they're fracking and this is after, and you follow the progression. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, not everybody has that skill set. Not every, even if they have that skill set, they don't want to dedicate their resources to that. They'd rather just pay somebody to do that. You know, and I, I say, Sometimes you want to cook at home. Sometimes you want to order from a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Most most firms are like all that crap will go to the restaurant. Right. 
by, well, by, right. yeah, by versus build, it's a it's a common common theme on this podcast. And you know, I honestly, like the, I think the nuts and bolts of, of all of this are, are fascinating, and and just like the, the nooks crannies of, of the the EO kind of ecosystem of end users broadly defined. But I do want to get I want I want to move us on to the quote you know quote unquote new thing or or the the, the newer thing. Uh, tell us about you know SkyFi SkyFi's mission of, of democratizing satellite imagery and when and where the initial idea for SkyFi was born. Wow! So I'm going to give you the longest version of how SkyFi was born because this is how the tools came. So there's a uh, there's a project called Freedom on the Move by. Um, I want to say Cornell, University of North Carolina, a couple of universities where they're looking at runaway slave ads and trying to crowdsource people to like translate like these kind of old English ads into plain text, right? Just crowdsourcing it. And I'm impatient as a trader. I'm like, no, I want to know this right away. Eric, write me a program that's going to scan all these ads and turn them into plain text. So he goes out, we get Amazon Turk, we feed it a thousand examples, boom, 10,000, 100,000, it's feed me more, turns them all into plain text. Great, we got a bunch of runaway slave ads with buried history in there, but the computer doesn't know what it is. So build me an attribution model that, you know, the computer knows that this means height, this means weight, this means skin color, this means job. So we built that, fed it a thousand examples. Boom, I can now tell you the meaning of what's going on in this, in this, uh, in this runaway slave ad. And so we have all the history of runaway slaves and and the seasonality of runaway slaves, what age they were, the average age, all this stuff, by state, by region, by county, et cetera. So I'm like, you know what? We know about machine learning. We know about optical recognition and recognizing optics and all kinds of things like that. Why can't we take satellite data and know what the hell's going on with frac crews exactly instead of this guesswork you know, that people are doing or these inaccurate reports that we're relying yeah. on? I guess we can. So let's go find, try and buy satellite data. Okay, so three and a half months later, we cut a big deal, right? We cut a two-year deal, global reach, um, um, and we now have the satellite data. We build the models. Boom, we have uh, the satellite fracking report, right? We don't guess, we know. That's our model. We don't guess, we know. And so, um, you know, I sort of think, you know, I dig for gold as a trader. But maybe it's probably more profitable for me to sell shovels. Mm-hmm. And, okay. And, fixed. and so, and, and, and the reason why is I'm building tools that my AUM, the amount of money that I'm managing, I'm at the borderline of whether or not I can use it, right? It's too expensive for me as a little fund. But if I sold this to all the other funds out there who would definitely buy it and need to use it, then their, their total AM, it, it works, mm-hmm. right? Like to split up the cost amongst many firms. So I said, okay, let, let's, 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 let's start a company that basically does analytics and builds trading tools, the same ones I use to make me myself successful, right? And I said, but natural gas is nice. It's a big market. You know, there's some things we can build, but what's the real, where's all the value at risk, right? Like if, 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 my, if the argument is like, hey, my fund is too small to buy and use this tool to make money because even if I get a good signal, I can't put on a big enough position to make, you know, to make any return, mm-hmm. right? But a multi-billion, multi-strat can, right? And I says, well, where is the most value at risk just generally in the world? And, it's, and I came to the conclusion that it's on the ocean. Okay. I think it's like 80, 90% of the world's GDP travels on the ocean. Then plus there's the, the, just the life value of the ocean and illegal fishing and pollution, et cetera, uh, crossing borders, illegal immigration, sanctions violations, piracy, vessels, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, et cetera. And I was like, well, what, what, what do they need to know? They want to know where pollution is. They want to know like fish populations, migrations, um, despeciation, illegal fishing, you know, sanctions violation, military actions, yada, 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 right? So the, 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 it's like this massive, massive value at risk. And I said, the, one of the biggest problems is one, tracking all this, and two, ships that avoid detection doing nefarious activities, which is the dark ship problem, right? So I'm like, we are going to build, like we build all the time, data fusion, a data fusion product, product 
that is maritime omniscience. We're going to know where every single dark ship is and track them. Not only are we going to know that there's a dark ship, we're going to tell you exactly what that ship is, attribute it, tell you what history is, etc. So this big, hairy S goal of building this model. So before, you know, when you're building a model, you need a lot of data. You got to feed your model a lot of data. So I'm running around uh, trying to buy satellite bucks, like buy satellite bucks, like two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of SAR, half a million dollars of optical, maybe some RF, right? Buy some RF, uh, uh, some hyperspectral if you got it. Give me what you got. Let's figure out how we're going to solve this problem. Like so, without going into the weeds of how it's solved, etc. I'm becoming extremely frustrated. Right. That, that, trying to buy I something. Like, like I'm, 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 I feel like we've become full, <laughs> we've, we've come full circle to, to the, your earlier point about just the frustrations. Yeah, I was, I was frustrated at the beginning, but now I'm ready to pull my goddamn eyelashes out. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to give guys a quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars, which, like, when I did the math on these guys' revenues and what's going on, like, this is a significant piece of, of money, right? But it's still taking back and forth and in-person meetings and, and, you know, what's your use case and, you know, all, all kinds of things to get a contract. And, like, obviously, I'm not buying the satellite data just for me to look at the picture. I'm going to make a product out of it, right? And then there's all this, like, use case and, 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 and licensing and bullshit and derivatives works and attorneys, like, arguing about, well, they could say this and, well, this could happen in the future. This could happen. And so... I, I'm I'm going nuts. I'm like going nuts, uh, trying to give money to satellite operators to buy the data, and it's taking time, like at, at pretty high price points. And so, in a particular meeting at Head um, with Cami, I, I go on a rant. I lose it. Like like I go to Head. I'm in an in-person meeting, and I'm just kind of like, listen, I like you. I really like you, but I don't understand why the fuck I'm talking to you. Like, why am I here? Like, I should be able to order this on my phone and, 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 and bulk, et cetera. And then I thought to myself, I'm like, why am I complaining about it? Why don't I just do it? Yeah. Like, what, if I'm having this problem, I look on Twitter, this guy's having the problem, everybody's having the same problem, right, with process, right, and also price, but mainly process, then maybe somebody needs to come out and build a real technology company a real technology platform to make this easier and, 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 and give people access to Earth observation data for whatever their use case is, right? And so, you know, we got to go in and we take the hard. Every, every tech company is basically taking hard and making it easy. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's easification. Most of it is of a known process, right? It's like everybody knows how to buy a CD or buy groceries or order a taxi or whatever. But Amazon, Uber... You know, Spotify, these things, these guys make it easier for you. Everybody knows how to go to a bar and get on a date, etc. But Tinder makes it easier for you, right? So the, the, you know, the theory is that, you know, how much easier you make something is proportional to your revenues. Uber makes something just a little bit easier, but the revenues explode. That doesn't mean they're going to be profitable, but right. the revenues explode, right? Amazon makes it a little bit easier, but the revenues explode. Right? Tinder makes it a little bit easier, maybe a lot easier. The revenues explode, right? We're taking something that, for most people, if I walked up to them and I said, here's, here's $10,000, go get a satellite image, you have four days, or you're dead. Most people will die. Yeah. Hey, 90% of your, people are going to die. The rest of people. Yeah, call your loved one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's over. Lights out, it's gone, you know? We'll call back to you. We'll get back to you. What's your use case? Guys, I'm going to die. I just need to buy a selling. Okay, we'll get whatever. You know, it's, 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 it's an ordeal, right? And so we're trying to solve that. We're trying to take that away and, and, and help the operators sell out their capacity by dragging them, kicking and screaming to the, a technological solution, right? Right. right. And, and they're, they're, not, they're not necessarily, like, they, they, they like it, right? Because I'm showing up and I'm saying, hey, I'm going to buy this imagery and there's this new market and I'm going to expand the market and et cetera. They're, they're skeptical because, of course, that they've been stuck in government land and trying to win contracts with three-letter agencies, right, and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, kind of the commercial is kind of like an afterthought. 
But the commercial's kind of growing, and, and some of them, like, I see it, but I don't see you going all the way down the chain, right? Like, from the prosumer down to the cons yeah, consumer, right? Yeah. Like, they just don't see that, it. That was my, I mean, that, yeah. that was the, my, my... Innovation requires early stage funding, but space startups don't have many options. Space Ventures is our world's first space investment portal offering direct access to investment deals and letting you back innovative space startups. Space Ventures has launched an effort to open an investment round into SpaceX. 2,000 investors have pledged to invest more than 38 million so far. The more investors pledge, the stronger the chances for SpaceX to conduct a community round on Space Ventures. You can be among the first retail investors to have the opportunity to invest in SpaceX by heading to their website and pledging to invest. No commitment required. Check out their website, spacedventures.com, for more information. My next big question. Is, 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 this, it, yeah. is this, you know, is this a, a consumer-focused venture? Is it B2B? Is it, is it, you know, a mix of, of both? And I, and it's, I know it's, 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 you know, you, you're, you're in, in alpha, right? Or you're in beta now, and, and production is, is slated for sometime next year. So, you know, I don't want to force you to an answer. And... And as as things change, and as, as the I mean, we have people that like, hey, hey, we don't want to use the platform. We want to use an API. There's enterprise people come like we just want an API. And yes, we don't want to deal with the pay chaos of dealing with five different people. Like nobody wants to go to the ice cream store, then the toilet paper store, then the chicken store, right? They want to go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. right? And so they want to have to have deal with fourteen different people, um, whether you're a professional. Or a consumer, and so you know, people like I get this question, like, oh, well, how, how, what, what about government contracting or with the government or an enterprise contract? You, I'm like, how does a government contract with Amazon? They just fucking use Amazon, right? The app is for everybody, whether no matter how big you are or how small you are, Amazon is there. How does the government contract with Uber? They just use Uber, right? Yeah. Everybody can use it, whether it's a, a large corporate account or with multiple people on one credit card or just the individual. They just use Uber, right? And so, you know, that's kind of, there, there may be some additional tweaks or APIs or custom APIs for like, hey, we're, we're gonna do lots of volume through you. But ultimately, if you make it simple enough that everybody can use it and it's convenient and you take away those pain points, then the market will come to you. Right, right. Right, it, it's, it, it, it's like, who uses the most teleco telescopes? Like, who buys the most cell phones? Is it scientists? I would guess. No, it's hobbyists. Yeah. Well, no, you know, I was going to guess. I was going to guess the government. <laughs> I was going to guess the government. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, it's not the government. It's not the government, but they might have some big, you know, right. the telescope or something. So, but when you go online and all these, you know, these nice telescopes that people, whatever, it's hobbyists, mm -hmm. right? It's not the government hoovering up all these telescopes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Who buys the most sneakers? It's not the government. You know what I mean? Who buys whatever? It's not the government. If you focus and give people access to these tools, they will make use of these tools in ways you never thought. Yeah, yeah, right? definitely. And I, I, want, to, I want to return to, like, to the, the actual like, UX of, of, of the app. Um, but first, you know, just so we don't skip over, over the, the first draft of history here, you know, how did you find Luke and convince him to come on board? Luke, you know, Luke Fish, the, the CEO, prop, a future guest on right. this podcast. Why didn't you want to be CEO? Raising capital, you know, what, uh, external capital. What was that process like from the other side of the table, so to speak? I, I, I can keep going, but right. I'll, th that's three right there. So, oh yeah, yeah, the three. So, um, so these two companies, Synmax, which is value add on data, and and SkyFi, which is democratizing, get the data, easify the data into other, everybody's hands, whoever needs to use it. Plus, you know application layer, storage layer, et cetera, community layer. But um, we, we separated these two out. And it was going to point like, I need to raise some money. Probably need to raise some money. So I you know, get on calls, tell people the concept and the ideas. And people are like, how are you going to do all this, Perkins? You know what I mean? You, you, you're, you're trading. You got this company. You got that company. You're playing poker. You're traveling. You know, you're, you're writing books. Whatever. You're on podcasts for books, et cetera. You know, maybe you can do it. But... You probably need to bring somebody else on. And I, you know, I tell them, I do not want to be CEO. The, the number one thing I love to do is fire myself. Because yeah, yeah. I'm generally not the tip of the spear to do the thing, right? Like I have the vision, I have the risk appetite, right? Uh, and in certain areas, I am the tip of spear, but generally I'm not gonna be the CEO, mm -hmm. right? So there was a, 
uh, CEO Hunt, uh, Josh Bear, Capital Factory, uh, Nikhil, uh, ex Uber was like, oh, I'm in with Uber Mafia, right? There's this Uber Mafia out there. He's like, yeah, that, 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 you know, ex executives, et cetera, and also that are running around that, uh, you know, people know. And, he, and they quickly got it. Like the Uber people quickly got it. Like they got the concept, they get the marketplace idea. Right. There's analogies. They get the user There's analogies that could be wrong. Yeah. The analogy is right there. They get it. And so, you know, there was this process, and they said, I think, I think this guy, Luke Fisher, is going to be a fit. Luke instantly got it. Right. He got it. He was excited, saw the vision. So the purpose of the vision, right? It's not like I don't care about slinging images. Right. Why I care about satellite imagery and Earth observation and democratizing that is that if I get that into the the common person's hands, the geniuses of the world will be able to have a significant impact on the world. Right. In ways I couldn't figure it out. Like you can't beat the mob. Right. Mm -hmm. Like. And so that's what I'm trying to do, right? Like the Apple computer, right, and the app phone, like Apple cannot be the app store. They are the app store in terms of the platform, but they cannot be all the apps on there, mm -hmm. right? There's multi-billion dollar companies that are apps started being on the iPhone and Android, right? The, and so that's their platform allowed the creative juices of other people to come out and create value for society, right? So if I am able to create a platform, get this information in the hands of the geniuses of the world, we're going to start solving some intractable, prob intractable problems in the world, very difficult problems, whether it be pollution, illegal fishing, uh, uh, whatever, crime, who, who knows, right? Despeciation, greenhouse gases, methane emissions, things I can't even think of, right? Deforestation, right? So, so that's, that's what I care about, right? And this, this is, happens to be a UX company with a vision of changing the world by democratizing the access of Earth observation. Luke gets it. Mm -hmm. He gets the business plan, the profitability, and the, and the long-term vision. And so, um, you know, his, his history in, in, at Uber and also in the military uh, uh, and, and in a tech company, you know, it was easy fit, brought him one. I was glad I was fired. I'm fired. I get to be vision guy. <laughs> vision guy and investor, you, you know, and, 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 and move on. Right. So that's, that's the loop question. Right. Um, well, the other questions well, were? The, the, I think, I think we, we hit on the other questions. And just because I don't want to lose this thread, you know, you mentioned you're a UX company. And so I would, I would venture that everyone, you know, you've recruited to date, well, I can't speak to everyone. I don't know everyone at the, at the company, but yeah. but it seems like a lot of your recruiting has been concentrated, not necessarily within traditional space backgrounds. I'm I'm assuming you would argue that that's a competitive strength, because you know you're you're yes. you're tackling, you're looking at this outside of the box. I don't want to just answer my own question, so I'll turn it over to you. Right. Yeah, I, I would say that you know, this is a software problem, right? So a lot of times we you know we have partners and they get it. They're like, look. We're not completely sure about this whole big market that you think is untapped out there, but you're willing to put some money up. We're going to build an API. They got like two programmers that are usually working with satellites, and they realize, holy shit, building the API is tough, right? Like, it's a different skill set, right? These guys are technology focused, right? Orbital science and, you know, friction on the satellite and lower Earth orbit and optics and stuff like that, and writing software is very very hard it's not it's a non-trivial thing and so we focused on like hey what are the pain points how do we design a user experience that is fantastic and then hire the programmers and designers etc on top of that and we don't care if we're selling cds marshmallows couches whatever or imagery it's the same concept that goes in there right and so we're deep in programmers and designers we have about one space expert. At, at first, now we have like two or three, but one, which is Cami, uh, in the company. And so, you know, you don't want to come to a broader market opening up and saying, hey, we're going to create be customer focused with a bunch of technology focused right. people. Yeah. These are just different, different skill yeah. sets. Yeah. And, you know, behind the scenes, of course, with the, the API and the back end 
and whatnot. And, and obviously all of the, the, the satellite partners that you've, you've announced, and I'm sure you will announce down the road, that's, that's a lot of heavy lifting. But you've also, and, and folks won't be able to see this for a bit, like I said, because it's still in beta, but you all showed me uh, a, a, a demo in Paris a couple months ago now. Right. And it really is, you know, it, 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 even in beta, it's, it's like you can point and click and, and buy a satellite image. And you can, you can, right. you can so select, you know, specifications and turn the knob and, and whatnot for, for what exactly you're looking for. But that's, of course, a, yeah. that's a front, that's a front end problem here. too. And I see that, I see why that you would describe yourself as, as, a, as a UX as a UX company. It's, it's always UX, right? At the end of the day, is the customer that creates all the value. Like, a lot of people get fixated on, like, I have the thing. And I'm like, you know what? Anybody can build the thing, right? I can buy a satellite in orbit for X dollars, right? There's, there's you know, everybody thinks they're secrets. Everybody thought they had the best TV, and every year, it's the worst TV. Like, a year later, two years later, it's like, oh, my gosh, this crappy-ass TV, right? So... You know, that's not the side we focus on. We're focused on the value and getting that service to the, to the customer, right? We're not technology focused. We're talking about like making it easy. What are their pain points? What do they know or don't know, right? Like how, how is it intuitive, et cetera? So, you know, what are they used to seeing, right? You know, what, is, what format would they like this information delivered? And, and depending on your expertise, that might be different. You know, the desktop version versus phone version, et cetera. Yeah versus API version, but it's always, 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 always UX, UX. Right, and I, well, I mean, I, User experience. I, I would stress that that is, again, quite a bit of extra heavy lifting from the get-go to be building this on mobile to start, just be, because, because that's not yeah. a form factor that people have, have traditionally, you know, engaged with, with, with satellite imagery or, or, or satellites, uh, broadly speaking. But while we're on the mobile thread, and, and you know, I, I know that I'm going to like your answer because we have this in common. But uh, it does. It, it strikes me as non-obvious to be building an Android app while you're you're also building an iOS app as you're just in, in beta. What is the what's the thought process behind building the Android app? And just so everyone knows, Bill and I both have have Android phones. Yeah. Well, we're, we're one, one is is that you know. Uh, Apple may dominate in the United States of America, but globally, Android is the operating system, right? And we're a global company. And so a lot of people get myopic with, oh, you know, I'm just going to build an iPhone, you know, because maybe they're in the entertainment business and entertainment consumption here is greater in, in Europe and they have iPhones, et cetera. But, like, if we're going to be a global company and be accessible and we want people to have a user experience, we don't want to cut out 60% of the globe or 70% right. of the globe or whatever it is, yeah. right? And so... Um, you know, it's it's a bet on the market, yeah. right? We we didn't we're not coming in Tibet. We don't run it. We, we're coming here. We're betting the come, right? We we came here to win. We believe that the the opacity of this market, the 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 process of this market, has thwarted people from getting data. And and we we constantly hear it like, oh, if I had this data, if it was easy, I would do this, or I could do that, or I could do this. Well, what if you can click on your phone? Yeah. Then, you know, it's, it's really just behavior design. Like behavior is a convergence of motivation, ability, and a prompt. Motivational speakers focus on motivation, but motivation goes up and down. Technology companies focus on ease. One click buy, swipe left, right? Deliver to your doorstep. Credit cards already loaded, right? Notification, easy to see, right? The more, the easier it is, the more likely the behavior is to happen, right? And I tell people, here's a simple example of it. A lot of people are on their phone all night when they go to bed. I said, go ahead and put the phone in your bathroom. Less than five feet away, you won't get up and out of bed to go get on your phone. You'll solve the problem by making the difficulty just that much more difficult, right? It doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but... It'll solve the problem of you being on the phone. The, 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 the reverse is true with, like, let's take that to satellite imagery. All the obstacles, all the phone calls, all the, all the, all the frustrations. Like, it's no wonder that they don't believe that this market isn't here or this demand isn't here. Because all the obstacles and frustration points are pain points. It only takes a small change in difficulty for a behavior to happen or not happen. And technology is all about removing the difficulty. Yeah, yeah. A, um, a fancier way that the tech industry likes to say that is abstracting away the complexity. 
Yeah, I call it easification. Yeah, yeah well, that that's I like I like that more. I might, Bill, I might start uh, borrowing that for the podcast. Start just just it easify, easify everything. I love it. You know, I love it. Last big question, I guess, about the business model, and I mean, we 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 should get Luke on here in half a year or so just to get an update. But how do you? Yeah. Since you're not, you know, obviously flying your own satellites, how do you decide who to partner with? In terms of you know the satellite I mean, we're, we're, that that is is populating your your your, your platform and going to you know, your customers. I, I I don't look at the satellite operators as competitors themselves. They need each other. No one has a network big enough, right? right? Nobody goes and just watches Warner Brother movies or Sony movies, right? They want to watch Netflix or Amazon Prime where everything is there, okay? At different times, they won't have the coverage ratios, the revisit rate, the pricing, etc. So if I was starting Uber. Um, I'm not going to start it with two cars, right? I need partners, yeah. right? I need partners on there. And, and you, know, my, my, you know, my partners are my, customer, are my customers as well. So when I go to satellite operators, I say, hey, listen, guy, I'm here to sell out your capacity, right? You're running around. You're trying to sell your capacity. You're trying to win these RFPs, et cetera. I'm like, just get on platform. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sell you out. I'm here to make you as much money as possible if you just go on this journey with me. And that's for every single one of them because the app becomes more valuable, more usable when there's a bunch of Ubers around. Right. And I can use the Ubers, Network right? Like, so if there's only one or two operators, this, yeah, this app sucks. I can't get an image to one ever. Then they don't use it. But they're like, oh, it's very convenient every time. You know, they'll use it more. And that those dollars will be, you know, funneled through us to the operators. So, you know, my, my pledge to the operators, sorry, this light just went out, but... It is what it is. Um, is it like a motion one? The pledge, the, yeah. The pledge to the operators is that we are here to sell your capacity out. Right. Like that's my greatest fear. My greatest fear is not launching this app, and we don't have the customers we think or whatever. My greatest fear is we launch, we're overwhelmed by customer demand, and we're that restaurant that opens up with not a big enough kitchen relative to the number of chairs we have. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's part of the reason why we're very slow rolling out beta and testing it, because we don't want to get overrun. We don't want to have a bad user experience. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be the bar that lets too many people in, and then everybody's experience goes down because it's too crowded and it takes forever to get a drink. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we are not picky with the operators. Right. The, the main thing is that you have an API that works and it meets our endpoints. Right. We get us on. We'll sell you up. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean another. Come join the run. We're going to take you to the promised land. You know. That's, yeah, and what's not what's not to love about that that pitch? What's the biggest thing that's shocked you about the space industry as you started working, you know, deeper and deeper? In it? Uh, oh wow, the biggest thing, um, how dependent it is on government mm-hmm. um, at this at this stage in the game, how uh, technology focused it is, and, and that that they don't have APIs. Yeah. Like even for themselves, like a lot of them don't have APIs, and even ones that are like on the same page, it's like, you know, they thought they just oh we're just going to build an API, and they spent like you know millions of dollars and don't have a product, and they had to you know get another firm to come build the API. They're like holy shit, you know that that part of the chain is kind of an afterthought to them, because they're so focused on like I got to get the satellite up, I got to calibrate it. It's got to have X, Y, and Z. It got to make X, Y. They're very, very technology focused, and then, and then just kind of thought, oh, the slinging of the images or whatever, selling it. That you know, I'll deal with that later. I'll, I'll build the API later and the software. And I'm like, okay, I got to tell you this, guys. Um, you know, I, I generally ask people like, when you go grocery stop shopping and you want to get soup, what kind of soup do you buy, right? And people will say, oh, Campbell's or whatever, or Chunky. And I go, no, you buy the fucking soup that's on the shelf. That's what you buy. Okay? So when you don't have an API, you're not on the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, you need to be on the shelf. Right? So a lot of them are, are, are like, well, you know, the, especially the legacy ones. Like, we have government contracts, whatever. They don't, they don't need that. But these newer satellite companies launching, et cetera, that, you know, need to move these images. I'm like... You need to be on the shelf. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You need, you need and, and don't think that you can just hire a couple salespeople and they're going to run around and they're going to do 400 million or 200 million or 50 million or whatever the millions you think in sales. It's not that many, you know, they can't fly around. There's not much time. Right. 
can't just right. You, can't just, not, you, you know, can't just, you, need, you can't just launch the hardware and have the rest be an afterthought. Like, yeah, and, and that's pretty much the shocking thing about the space industry. It, it is mm -hmm. the API has been an afterthought for for someone. Some for some of the newcomers, which we, it shouldn't be. It should be like, who's our software team? What, what, what are the API, API inputs? What are the customers looking for? What are, what are, if I have an enterprise customer that's going to be using a lot, what, is, what do they need? And they're not, they're, they're, not, they're not thinking of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have been, you've been a, you've been a gracious guest. I want to let you uh, prepare for, for Chris Rock and, and, and go have a good night. But before we go, just wrap, yeah. the rapid fire questions. You, you, you know, okay, I love you've this. been a, a film pr producer, so... But but do you like sci-fi? Yes, Fav love sci-fi. Favorite sci-fi? Love sci-fi. Uh, it's probably Blade Runner. Okay. I've watched it a zillion times. Um, um, that that is kind of I'll there, take it up there. I'll and, take it. Sci-fi horror is Alien, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're getting to Aliens. Uh, Star Trek or Star Wars? Wow, it depends on which version you okay. have. I'm a I'm a fan I'm a fan of the old school tar Star Trek and probably Empire Strikes Back is probably one of my favorite favorite movies. And this is so unfair of me to put this in the rapid fire section, but what are your thoughts on the age old question of Are we alone? Wow, that's really um, my, my, my 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 answer is doesn't matter mm -hmm. when you can't travel at the speed of light. There you go. Or near the speed of light. There you go. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I would say the answer is we are not alone, but it doesn't really matter. Right. What would you be doing if you weren't in your line of work? That's also a difficult one for you because you have multiple lines of work. Yeah, I have multiple lines of work of what I would be doing. I, I think I'd be a farmer. Okay. Just like kind of gardener, Maybe. farmer, yeah. and a traveler. Yeah. A gardener and a traveler. <laughs> and then last one, I actually just thought of this uh, towards the end of the show, but what's the funniest or most bizarre, I suppose, image that you have bought on the SkyFi app? Well, I mean, it's in beta. Uh, I don't know if it's bizarre. I bought an app, a picture of the Coda. I bought a picture of the... Uh, so I think, not bizarre, funny... But as a gift, I have a friend whose name is um, Rick Lowe. He's an artist. Um, he's been, his whole thing is uh, culture is art, mm. preserving spaces and, and living is art. And so he started painting. And his paintings, I'm going to give away some of the secret, but like his paintings, if you look at it, it's a very abstract view of like city maps, et cetera, right? And there's words buried in it. It's, it's layered and it's kind of this whole like life is art type of thing. And so... Um, I ordered some satellite photos of, of areas in the fourth ward and in, in, in fifth ward in, in, in Houston, and I printed them up. Awesome. Awesome. Gave it to them and sent that aperture radar, you know, cut them out as a gift as art. So I don't know if that's I'd funny. Say, no, I'd it's say funny, that's funny. appropriately bizarre for, for yeah, this Yeah, appropriately bizarre. So I would say, I would say that, that that's the, the thing I've ordered on and, the SkyFi app. Okay. And, and then last one, we're, I, I know we're, we're both fellow wake surfers. I, I you know, obviously doing my due diligence. I looked at your Instagram before this. Will you ever yeah. be able to buy an image of yourself wake surfing on the SkyFi app? That would take a lot of so, technology. That would take a lot of timing. That would try to get the timing right. But I mean, I, I'm out there all day, right? So like, <laughs> I think the timing we can get, we can get it right. We will have the revisit rate to get it. I think when Albedo gets its 10 centimeter up. Oh, there you go. On a, that's an Austin it, to Austin connection right there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be. I'm gonna order me wake surfing, and we're gonna, you know, I'll be like a little, little couple dots or whatever. But you'll you'll make out my boat very nice. You'll make out the wake very nice. You'll be like those couple of dots are Bill Perkins right there, you know, surfing. That so well, that's it. I think you will. That is a great note to end on. Bill, thanks so much for the time and for coming on the show and enjoy the other show tonight. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, that was fun. Uh, that'll do it for Pathfinder 0024. I definitely had trouble keeping up, but was not bored once during that conversation. Uh, for those of you out there who, who have the need for speed and listen to your pods at 2x speed, I hope you didn't do so for this episode. If you did, uh, RIP. 
Anyways, if you like what you heard, leave us a five-star rating and review on your pod platform of choice. We work really hard on these newsletters for your ears, and those ratings and reviews can really help move the needle and get this to a wider audience. Pathfinder is brought to you by Payload, a modern space media brand. While we have designs and becoming the biggest space content company in the galaxy. Today, we publish Pathfinder, our daily payload newsletter, and Parallax, a weekly science briefing for the space industry. As always, I'd love to hear from you with feedback, constructive, constructive criticism, guest suggestions, or just if you want to say hi, you can email me at ryanpayloadspace.com or DM me on Twitter. I'm at the handle Ryan Duffy. That will do it, though, for Pathfinder 0024. I'm Ryan Duffy signing off, and I'll see you back here very soon.